<laughs> so Frances MacDonald, the chatelaine of Criven, has many different things to different people. She's the personification of the hotel, independent, elegant, resourceful, and characterful. To her many friends, she has a warm, reassuring presence for whom resilience is expressed in humor and understanding. As an artist, she has quietly emerged as one of the most eloquent observers of the West Coast and islands. Her oil paintings, invariably made with palette knife, are always true to time and place and are hard won. She needs to be there, prey to the vicissitudes of weather and human failure, to get the kit to the right place and the right time to let the magic happen. And when I wrote that, which was kind of heartfelt, okay. I, I realised at the end of it, of course, it wasn't entirely true, because the extraordinary paintings you see on this wall, and we made this, this commitment to this subject, these, these five large paintings, and of course none of these uh, were made on the spot, in a sense couldn't be, simply because of the, the scale. And um, it, I might as well ask Francis perhaps first, how do you manage to sort of paint on this scale a subject which, which isn't in front of you. Obviously, the experience of having looked at it so much, it's sort of there, and it's, it's there, it's actually in your inner eye, and you're able to start working. Well, it's just you've got a big canvas, you just, you know, get right into it. And it's, I'm always, I always like working on a large scale. I prefer it, really. And I don't find it too difficult. I mean, it's in my mind. Tip number two, that second one on there. I got back to my studio in April and I had to make it start doing something. And uh, I was looking at all these canvases lined up, they were empty. And uh, I just cut that one up and I thought, no offense, I own a, no sketch, no nothing, because it's in my head. <laughs> so that was how that one came about. And you know, some of the others I refer back maybe to sketches or to photographs, but I can go to my studio and paint. The North End of High Owner because it's there. <laughs> so it's quite easy, really. I mean, it's not that easy. I don't want well, to. Well, I'm pleased to hear it's not <laughs> too, too easy. Um, it's very difficult. <laughs> um, it's a place, that little bit of the North End of Iona, which is deeply familiar to, to so many people who have understood it through this have been there, but also seen the work of Carl and, and Peplo back in the, in, in, in the 1920s and early 30s. And it is extraordinary in a way, isn't it, that um, here's this small island, uh, ex many extraordinary things on the community, with the ancient sites, the Atlantic coast, the Macha, the golf course, the, 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 the quarry, the sand of Iona. And yet it is that little bit of the North End, whereas there is no grass, mm. which is the bit that really is, 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 is so paintable. I think it was Carol that observed it. All you have to do is move your viewpoint by five degrees and rely on the fact that the weather is changing constantly and you have a, a, an infinity of, of subjects. And this is obviously something that, that you feel because there's something so fresh every time you, you tackle. Yeah, the, you, could the, the, there, you could stay there for a whole summer, I suppose, on the same beach and just, as you say. Well, ideally that's probably what you would do, but then life yeah. intervenes, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> no, it does. Yes, that would be perfect. Could you, could you tell us about your, your first visit to Iona? Because of that, oh, yes. it has to be a first visit. Oh well, yes, it's pretty disastrous if I stood to Iona. <laughs> so, our lid's up there. But anyway, it's, um, I, I went on the George V, which was a steamer at that time, going out from Robin, and uh, went round the north end of Mull, and uh, we eventually arrived at Iona. And I had Ross, my son, who's also a painter now, in a Moses basket because he was just six weeks old. And Julia was sort of somewhere around on the reins or in my hand or something. It was all pretty frantic. And uh, anyway, we lost Julia on board and uh, had to make an announcement. The captain made an announcement and eventually she was sighted down in the dining room eating ice cream with the waiters. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, by the time I got to Iona, I was completely and utterly wiped out. And I had my in-laws with me, so we got ashore, and I sat just on the slipway, had a cup of tea, and I didn't see anything at all, and there were beaches. It was, I wasn't really a teacher at all. And it was about 20 years after that that I did go back and start painting it. And then I went back on our own boat, the scar, which um, was repainting off it through there, and um, straight up to Iona, which was perfect, and anchored off and went ashore. No children, completely relaxed.
to ask you, um, you're kind of known for, for using this technique, you obviously draw and you've, you've worked on the paper as well, but now really this is your kind of signature, signature technique. How did you come uh, to this sort of technique with, with oil paint? Well, I didn't write, I sort of did watercolours probably for about 15 years and you know, sketching and then <clears throat> eventually I think it was when my son went to art school, he, he came back and said, Mark, for goodness sake, get rid of these watercolours <laughs> and do something you really want to do. <clears throat> and of course, everything at art school is big, so I thought, well, really impressive. So when he came back, I had actually bought a three foot square canvas. And uh, then I sort of started on it and realised that just wasn't big enough, so I stuck another one in there. Um, so I did my first Iona oil that was partly brush and partly just a little bit of palette now because I was just sort of getting into that and um, I ended up with a painting which I kept and uh, he was quite impressed actually. <laughs> 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 I didn't have to say it, I think he was. So anyway, the watercolours went out the door and I haven't done very much in very watercolours since then. Maybe occasionally if I'm on a trip I'll use some, you know, just felt it pen and a bit of colour. But, um, so that's how it started, and then once I got, you know, more so bigger brushes and bigger brushes and bigger canvases, then the palette knife came in just, you know, because I was doing a lot of seascapes at the time, not so many rocks, I suppose. So to get the waves and that, that was it. It just seemed to work better. I mean, the, the big well, painting on yeah, the, the chili press at the other, other end of the camera, but that is, um, it's, it's like a, the, the only equivalent I can think of in Scottish painting is, is um, Grandfather MacTaggart painting it. It's not like, far from the yeah, Yes, and he, he, he painted down there. So the, the gestures, in order to, your, your response to that sky and that day where there's a lot of weather around and quite a big, big swell, <laughs> is obviously to use more paint and, and, the, and paint. the bigger gesture. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, I just use the same palette knife all the time. It's quite this size. There's one in the box out there. So sort of this size. The biggest one you can get without venturing into trials. You need the flexibility, yeah. yeah. So they're very flexible, so you can make them do lots of stuff. You can make them do little tiny details, and you can also make big. But that, and then that was a very stormy day. So I did do a sketch, <coughs> I took some photographs, and if you do something like that, for me at any rate, I have to go right back to the studio and do it as soon as possible not think about it for a week or so. You know, you just have to go right in there before you can remember it as well as um, what you felt. So that was quite a wet and windy day. Yes, I mean, the idea, most people think of drawing as, as you're taking a brush or a, or a pen for a walk, something sort of discursive. Whereas for you, drawing is, it's, um, it's individual, it's mark making, really, isn't it? It's a series of, of marks. Yeah. But obviously yeah. you can't, you, you can pull a palette, palette knife so far, but then you run out of paint, you've got to go back and, <laughs> and, and refresh it. But I don't, when I'm doing something like that, I don't do anything on the canvas first. I just paint it straight off. So I don't sketch that onto the canvas. I may do a sketch of the book and have on the side, but just paint straight off to the canvas. Yes. Otherwise, if I try to sketch on the canvas, it gets really tight. Best to just go in. And what and when, when you start up at the top and you gradually get down to the foreground? Yes, well, I was going to say, when you're faced with that blank yeah. canvas, which you know it's like the writer on the blank sheet of paper, <laughs> it's, it's making that first uh, that first mark. Yeah. Is there a certain a formula, but how, how would you tend to sort of get started? I sort of imagine it might be the horizon line, but it isn't necessarily. I know, now you were saying that, but it's not funny enough. So I was in the top right hand corner, and I don't know why. Maybe because I'm right handed. But I'm usually sort of up there in the sky before I come down to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be thinking, I might have gone like that somewhere down the canvas, thinking the horizon might be two thirds of the way down, or a third, or I might want a big sky or a big foreground. But that would be the only decision, just the line. How did you actually become a painter? What are the origins of Francis MacDonald, artist? Oh, well, I've always been able to draw. That's the help. Really, since I was little, I was always um, able to draw, you know, whether it was animals or something. I was always drawing rather than reading, let's put it that way. And then I did do, well, I didn't do art at school. Well, I sort of did, I was going to do it. 
You want to hear the real story? Yes, <laughs> yes, I was going to say. <laughs> when I was going to go to art school, I was really keen on the idea at Edinburgh Art College. And I had a really good friend who was there. And he's actually quite a good cartoonist in Orkney now, Bill MacArthur. He used to do the tour, the, well, you Astrid knows him. He used to do the cartoons. We've been friendly since we were so high. But anyway, we were both always trying to outdo each other with our drawings when we were kids. And we'd go and stay with our grannies in Tarbert and do this. And anyway, I thought, well, he's gone to Edinburgh Art School, I'm going to go to Edinburgh Art School. And however, my cousin had got there ahead of me. And uh, she was. Was this her first cousin? No, no. <laughs> cousin once removed. Completely removed. That's an Argyle cousin. Yeah, an Argyle cousin, but you know, she wasn't my immediate friend. I didn't really know her that well, but she was there. And she was um, living with some bearded fellow. So I heard from my friends. <laughs> <laughs> in, my, in my day of going to art school, that doesn't matter now, that's normal. But then anyway, it wasn't quite so normal. And then she got pregnant, even worse. And then she was taking food out of the fridge to feed, feed the bearded fellow. So and the whole thing became like, you, you can't possibly go to. That's a cautionary tale. <laughs> <laughs> I said you become a beatnik or something. I don't know, I don't know strange ideas. They're quite stupid my things. And uh, anyway, I ended up thinking, oh, well, what can I do just to get out of this uh, constraint of ideas? And I thought, well, I'll go to sea. So I thought I'd start trying to find out how to go to sea. So you needed a training. So I went to Edinburgh Royal Infirmary and did a general training there. And then I went to the States and did a year in the operating theatre. And I think, am I right in saying that the, the nurses training in Edinburgh in, in, that, in that era, they were quite well protected, weren't they? Yes, for, for, from, from those bearded, bearded nuts. <laughs> 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 yes, knock went on the door at 10.30 and uh, that was it. But anyway, we eventually escaped. But I did go to States for a year and then I came back and found out I still didn't have enough qualification. I had to do mid replace, so I did that at Simpsons. So I could probably do it for a baby. This is <laughs> anyway, having done that, then I did get a really good job at sea with Union Castle Shipping Line. And um, I was able to paint when I was away and sell stuff to the purchasers and things. <laughs> really? Yeah, so there's yeah, a sort of internal market yeah, on Cape, the boat. Cape Town, um, Durban, whatever, little coaster scenes. I was always painting and drawing, and then finally, I got married, went to Crimin. I met someone at sea, of course, as if one does. And um, my husband and I, five days after I was married, ended up at Crimin Hotel, and he was the manager there. And then eventually we got it ourselves. But then I had plenty of spare time to catch on with my painting, and that was really. But I so had the, all this other stuff before. You know? So the spare time that was created in, yeah. in the early years of your marriage at Crinan, how did that come about? Because I, I, it, it's a pretty full on, I know, we know I, it's a pretty full on existence yeah, running over It is now, but I wasn't doing very much. I was doing the flowers. <laughs> I did so the flower doing... arrangements. And then I'd be kicked out because I didn't really know much about painting in these days. So, so what was your first subject when you started to work at, at Crimin? Was it was it the kind of view yeah. from the hotel and sort well, of cross the Jura? Fishing boats and stuff, yeah, mm -hmm. fishing boats and in the canal basin and around the place. I always like being boats, yeah. And Crimin is a, I mean, most of you have been there and it is a wonderful, very paintable destination and has, like Iona, been a very popular place for artists yeah. to come to work. And so you got to know a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I yeah, got a lot of encouragement from coming in and McClure. And uh, lots of other really, you know, well-known artists, Archie Forrest. I mean, a lot of artists come to Crinan, which is great. So. Alison Watts' dad, he was a regular. Yeah, Jimmy Watt, he was there doing his fishing boats and <laughs> buffers. And, yeah. and, uh... So it's lots of people talking art or doing art, and you know, so it's natural. I was just getting more and more into it. And then there's, um, I met someone here at my private view the other day who had um, reminded me of this. Uh, this lady Betty Hunter, um, she painted under the name um, Elizabeth Lowen, I think it was. Uh, she took one of my first efforts. Um, I just got there, of uh, Crimin through to the Scottish Women Artists, and it got in, so I thought, well, this is worth <laughs> with a bit of a And then, so after that, I did get onto the council of the Scottish Women Artists, and so it's a lot more and more involved than the Royal Plaster Institute. And, 
you know, just send them to open exhibitions and then eventually get up some galleries to show. Yes, well, I mean, you know, well, we must give the galleries some credit. Yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> <there we are. laughs> That's the one in town. I don't mean the paintings, I mean the size. Uh, the I, I do think it's, it's, an, well, it's, an, astonishing, well. it's an astonishing uh, wall, of, wall of work. Yeah. And of course, um, you, you show with uh, Tom Hewitt at the Portland Gallery yeah. and had the, yeah. gosh, ah. This summer uh, we made a, a, a trip again on, on Scar uh, up the Caledonian Canal, which was which was fantastic. And there are a few beautiful little um, real-time pictures that were made. There's, there's, there's a little picture of Art Gower, uh, yeah. which I think is... For the sunset, four in the morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and then you... there's one like this small, and that is just going yes. to be sure it's a perfect time to paint. So, there, there are and the one at the end there, which is uh, obviously reflections on, on the corner of the canal, isn't it? With, is that Ben Nevis? Ben Nevis, yeah. Ben Nevis beyond. It was very, very hot. Because that was a very, very hot week. Must have been about 84. Yes, and there were only, I the entire trip, really only half a dozen pictures sort of emerged. Yeah, exactly, really. yeah, which... I think I was a wee bit not in my comfort zone, and it was too hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I never say that in Scotland, it's a perfect weather for being in Iona, but Ross, my son, had decided this year's trip was going to be up to Port Augustus, and probably it's the best weather we've had for the islands. Yes. So I was a bit, yeah, I got a few ideas, but... At the end of the trip in Fort Augustus, both Ross and, and Francis kind of set up um, amidst all the kind of bikers and tourists with ice cream cones and, and fish and chips. Oh, we were doing a demonstration. Because it was, it was so it was busy. You ended up doing a demonstration. I ended up doing nothing. Well, I did something that gave up because it was too hot and too windy. <laughs> and Ross, my son, he took over and he couldn't find it.